Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Last time, of course, we set up this mad turbo system on yes, the posting we bike. We've got we this set it awesome up. pipe. We've got this. Marty's got the hose. Before we get more into that, do you love engines as much as Martin and I do? I don't care whether it's a car or a bike. This is our mad engine heart t-shirt. It's an engine over your heart, but then all the blood vessels they're actually streets. That's a map because the engines take you on adventures. You can grab them from the Mighty Come On shop. They were designed by a friend of ours, Bill Chen. Freaking awesome. We love it. Our engine heart shirt. Check it out. Now, Martin, today's the day. Maybe you This should... is the most pumped I've been about a turbo project for a little while. <laughs> no. Run the graphics. What's wrong? No, no, run the graphics, definitely. What's wrong? We're going to have a chat. Just run the graphics. Welcome to another... <laughs> What's going on? Graphics. Cool. What? What's going on? I'll tell you in a sec. Do the graphics. We already did the graphics. No, we didn't. What? We need to do them now. Okay. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Bike Don't Work. What do you mean? It doesn't work yet. We're it not finished it. No, but it's not going to. Don't. We've, no, I know. Do I'm sorry, dude. Do I, I know you had the vibe. That's no, not the I'm, Martin look, that I know. I'm sorry. You, I know you're full vibed up. I know how excited you've been about this posted bike for years. And this turbo has been sitting here teasing us, but it's going to keep teasing us for a little bit longer. Do you know why? No. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, your what do you mean, you? Beautiful. Dude, like, there's no you. There's us. There's only a this we. This is a teamwork, man. There's no you in we. There's what? urine in we, though. <laughs> so this... This art artwork of pipe that Martin is going to be heat wrapped to and all the mad it. stuff in there. I don't want to cut to it. I have to explain it. This is going to be all mad and heat wrapped and whop, 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 whop and make noises. Do you want to start it? Yeah. We yeah. can start it just for a second and then I'm going to explain everything. Now, just before anyone freaks out, I have pre-primed the turbo. I'm going to start it for a second. We just want to make sure that it actually spins and does things and makes noises. I have pre-primed the turbo so it's not we're not, not going in turbo dry. Can you... Can you, can you put that on the thing, on that, that black one? And I'm gonna put it on this red one, and I'm gonna turn this on. Yeah. Are you ready, people, to hear Wait it? Hold on, since people have been here last time, we've got a custom oil line. Here's we some, should be showing you that. I did, look at the thing. So I, I, I plugged that in, basically. I had to, last night I had to go and get one of these lines, custom made, because didn't have the fitting, whatever. Drilled a hole in there, tapped custom it out. Custom made, look it at is custom. People. It's so good, so I love good. it. I love it's it so too. awesome, and so it takes all pressure from up here, sends it in the turbo. At the moment, I don't have anything in the bottom of the turbo, so it should just leak oil. But we are going to drop that back out into here where the, the dipstick is, yeah. and then we've got our oil going round and round. That's I still can't system. see a problem. So give it a hit and have a listen, dude. Okay. Yeah! It sounds fat. It's spinning. It sounds so fat. Yeah, now turn it off. What's missing? My hand is dry. I oh, know. So. Where's the oil? So. Some, some. Wait on, if we undo this, does oil come out? No. Wait on, there's no oil in our... Well, there is. If, if you undo it here, for anyone who's getting all nerdy and scientific, some people have probably already worked it out. If you undo it here... Let's do it. Do you want to see? Yeah. Now, what I'll do, I'll, I'll disconnect the fuel injector so we don't actually start it, because we don't need to start the thing. So there's fuel injectors off, so we'll be able to crank it, but not actually run it. Yeah. So we're not... We're entering the turbo. So if I undo this, fitting down here. Martin, I'm getting excited and scared. I know, but this is how we learn, because I've never turboed a posty bike before, have you? Uh, not many people have, man. Well, a few people have, and I, I managed to find um, a couple of homies who have. All right, give it a little crank, mate. I'll check engine lights on, that's good. That's all right. Look there, we want to see oil. Look! Look, oil. golden nectar. Yeah. All right, so that's the good part, is that it is ejecting golden nectar, but you know what it will not do? Eject golden nectar the whole way up this line. So if we undo that and plug that on, there's no oil coming out? No oil coming out. I will. Is should there have, oil? Should we show the people? Is there oil in this line, though? Because maybe the whole system needs to be pressurised, do you know what I mean? There's not enough um, flow and or pressure is the problem. So let's have a look. We'll see if we can get it to do it because it will dribble oil out that little that little fitting. Yeah. But it won't actually push enough oil up the line to lubricate the turbo. That little drip that came out is just going drip, 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 
drip, drip. So we're not actually getting any oil in here because but we it should takes be, so long to get We should up. be getting a lot of oil in there. Just crank it and we'll see. We'll see if we can fill up this line. Oh, probably got to put the positive on for it to crank. We're going to make it work, Martin. I don't know that we are. Yes, we are, dude. I don't, don't think so. Don't say things like that. <laughs> I don't like it. Everyone's coming along for the ride regardless. Makes me wonder who you are. It needs to go on the actual big dick. There we go. All right. Crank. Let's go. I reckon it's up to there so far. So there is oil going into here, but at the moment, the whole thing is kind of like not airlocked because the end is not closed. This just doesn't have any oil in it. Once that's got oil in it, I have a small level of confidence that it'll work. I don't reckon it's going to work. And I'm, I think because the... <laughs> this is excruciating for anyone who's ever uh, turboed a posty before. There's our problem. We got no oil into our turbo. Mm. So, the options are, you either move your turbo, so some people have managed to make it work by moving their turbo right down here near your front wheel, yeah. and then basically the oil just sort of dribbles out there and falls into the turbo, and then they actually feed it back into the sump underneath, okay. which generally in car land is not the way you do it because you, um, you have problems with dropping it under the le level of oil in the, in the sump, but apparently it works, I don't know. Uh, and, but then you've also got the exhaust blowing on your foot and you can't put your fairings back on, so I'm not as into that as I am getting it up here loud and proud with this mad straight pipe. I'm vibing on a separate oiling system, Martin. Yeah, and that Either is... Either gravity fed or otherwise, and yep. I'm talking about... This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking Touch about... I'm talking about this, Oki strapped like that. With a hole punched in there. Not even joking, there. with a hole punched in there and a hole punched in there. And then at least for today, another one of these <laughs> with the lid off hanging like that. <laughs> <laughs> just look like, like just to see to, if the technology exactly works. to prove to prove that the, that it's actually possible to make some boost with this thing like I'm into it uh, um, but yeah I, I would I wouldn't recommend it um, for a this long is not solution. about this is not how to turbo your posty <laughs> I hope not this is about <laughs> you and I trying to make this posty boost I suggest we carry on just like this yeah and look there's there's no I kind of like actually I really like the idea of having the bottle there because we can literally strap that and we can just punch, like drill a little hole in there with a fitting or whatever. Yep. And then go boop, into there. Yes. And then like we need something, maybe like a drink bottle. Yeah. We're going to use your drink bottle. <laughs> Thanks. I'm just donated it to the yeah, project. Okay. Your metal drink bottle. Yes. Can get, get like mounted down here somewhere with a hose in it. And then that's going to be our turbo oiling system. Yeah. Maybe it Full should be a clear style. one so we can actually make sure there's oil going into yeah, it. Yeah, sure. It won't get that hot. Um, what I'm really interested to find out is how long it takes for one litre of oil to flow through a turbo. <laughs> like, do you know, like, is that one minute? Is it 10 minutes? Is it 10 seconds? Um, and gravity will be enough, right? Sure. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> no let's idea. do it. So what's happening here is our oil is here. Our oil is coming from the pump through here and it's going down this little kind of chamber here and then it's going through here and there's a tiny little pinhole where it's going <laughs> what we've tapped in over here is this line which is here and the only pressure that that oil has to push against is the atmospheric pressure right here in this room which I believe is one bar which is 14.7 or 14.5 it also depends on whether you're at sea level or not so <laughs> don't pull all this apart too much all I'm saying is is that the oil can either push against a tiny little hole or the path of least resistance, I would suggest, is actually going up here in the new fitting we've made. Assuming there's no turbo on there, all that oil has to do is press against atmospheric air pressure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, not really. I'm not enough of a scientist. Well, to I mean, I'm not, why. what I'm saying is, is you've got a little hole this big. Yep. Then you've got a big hole. Yep. It goes out easier there. Yep. <laughs> so what? It should be going, it should be, do you want a muffin? Oh yeah. Uh, it, it should be easier for it to flow oh, through here. So healthy. Our concern should be that there's no oil going. Science, science, <laughs> blah, blah, make my turbo work, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> nah, man. Right, what, fill it from the other end. I don't no, know what you're doing. you've got to get scientific on it, Squirtle it. I'm going to take this off. Yeah, go fine, and then squirt it up the line. We are pre-filling our oil line. Oh, look at that, Martin. Eh! 
Let's all come back out. So we have pre-primed the line full of oil and now we're going to start it again and see if we actually get any oil coming out the top of this. Here we go. Come in spinner. Science! Is that what just happened? Some science? Oh, I, I don't know, man. I just thought... <laughs> all I care about is this... All I care about is your happiness, dude. Really? Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. And I know that you're excited about Turbo Posted Bike. We need to make it happen. No, no. no, no. Beep, beep, boop, boop, what? Beep, beep, boop. You taught me this, Martin. What? No! What? You taught me this. Taught you what? That you don't do that. You put that on that and then we test it again. Yeah, dude. Don't, I, ta I don't. taught you that? Yes, you did. All right, good. This is how you work out the systematic breakages <laughs> in like a system. <laughs> okay. Going bit by bit to find the weakest link. This is what you taught sure. me. Sure, all right. Go for it. Martin, don't... No, we're not here to mess around, man. I know, clearly. Stripping. We're working? Yep. Oh, no, no. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Sorry, Martin. Let's let's prime this full of oil as well. It is. Are you sure? Yeah, it's full. Dripping. What's more worrying is the amount of water that's dripping out of our, out of our exhaust. Why is there water coming out? I don't know. It's an air cooled on. bike. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. This is uh, the how to not do science thing. So what we want to see now is we want to see some oil drip through the turbo. And if it drips through the turbo, we can be very sure that what we have actually done is completely starved our rocker of any oil pressure. No. No, because remember, the squirter. <laughs> the squirter versus the atmospheric sea level, Martin. Yeah, man. All right. I mean, the, atmosf the, at there the you atmospheres. Go. There you go. All right. Now the turbo's on its own because we can't help it with any more oil. But let's get, Martin. But to get systemic, systematically whatever, I'm going to pull off this little fitting on the bottom of the turbo because I don't trust that it's uh, going to work properly yet. Just to see if we can get turbo, turbo oil. This can come off. Here you go, Martin. What's that? That's our test sheet. Hold that under the turbo, please. If you please. see oil here, we did it with science. <laughs> what about if water drips off because of the condensation that we've... Then we didn't do it, All right. also with science. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah. Oh, so much water. Clearly there's something wrong with the turbo. Oh, dude! It's happening! Are you sure? Yep. Where? Look, it's about to drip. Yeah, dude. Where? Look, it's a drip! It's a drip! It's not in the wait, let me fix this chart. Come over here. If you see oil here, not there, <laughs> then we did it with science. Uh, yes! What are we celebrating exactly? Um that our turbo is not getting nearly enough oil. No. And we'll blow the first time we ride it. Or the tappets will seize up because they're not getting oil. Yeah! Yeah! Oh. Oh. Okay, so disregard the last 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes you saw of us saying that it's not going to work because it still maybe might not it's work. not. It still might not work. <laughs> but right now it does work. So, a couple of cable ties. That there's going to go up there. There's our oil line, people. Now... <laughs> Which is good because it wasn't cheap. We're going to gonna drain... Amazing. How much was that? How much was it? 
Seventy dollars? Was it more than seventy dollars? Yeah. Much more than seventy dollars? Yeah. Like not a hundred and twenty dollars? No. Really? Yeah. Not two hundred. It's not, not in the two hundreds. Not quite. Eighty bucks. A mm, little bit lower. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Including GST or not? <laughs> how much did? How much came out of our account, Martin? <laughs> $160. Because some of these fittings are very, we don't, very we don't clever. Care. All right, the so little anyway, right angles, no, really that was 30 bucks just for the little right angle thing. That actually is interesting. But whoever made it, they should get that. Here's oh, the problem. People go, and that's cheap, that's cheap. Someone has to pay. Yep. And it Someone took, has to pay. It took the guy a good like half an hour to do it because it's very... You, the machines to make this stuff cost millions of dollars. Anyway, it's a beautiful line. It is. It I really lovely. like it. I'm anyway, happy with it. Oh, we're going to go so now So don't bag out, out the line, line, dude. I really I'm not like bagging it. out the line. Were you bagging it? No, of course no, not. just the cost. Oh, even the cost it is costs, probably... It costs money to make things turbo. That line costs the Doesn't same it? as a turbo. You have anyway. to spend money to buy a... And, and a I don't. Someone does. I don't need either of those things. Well, if you did. And you don't either. No, so but if you did... don't pretend you did. So I'm actually beeping them. Because I don't, I don't want anyone to think that we endorse that shit. No, it's gross. Martin, now we're going to put a feed... Why is it spitting a... water? Sorry, you talk. I don't know, and neither do you. <laughs> no, I don't. So, Where's let's not water? even go. There's so no now water. we're going out of the bottom of the turbo, oil return, back into here. Let's go, Martin. And let's just put some music on. Yep, let's that chill sounds it out. good. That's that sounds good. too much talking, yep. isn't it? That sounds good. And now let's just have a nice, beautifully shot sequence of this going together. That's a great idea. to mount our intercooler. <laughs> now, there's a couple of different options. Now, I'm all for, <laughs> I'm all for a, a front mount. That's very course. literal in the sense of um, that it's a front mount. And look, we could do a headlight delete and then kind of put that in there, which would be clean or kind of hang it down here. That there probably is going to be a little bit too big. For example, a little bit, a little bit too big. Right? A little bit too big. Do you play a proper thing on it. What could be... Play a proper thing. What could be better is... Yeah, that's sick. Mad. Martin has another idea. Uh, so, the Daihatsu parts bin has been getting a workout, even from our little turboed K truck, which you can watch there. And um, this is a Daihatsu mirror. Intercooler. It's actually a top mount, I believe, that goes on a EFDET 660cc um, car, which means that intercooler is big enough for a three-cylinder 0.6 litre. This is a 0.1 litre single cylinder, so it's already oversized. Let's go with that one. Sorry, I cut off your mad song. Sorry, man. That's okay, Martin. Um, anyway, so front mounting is an option, but on a motorbike, you've also got issues with you know ergonomics of pipes and stuff. So you don't want to have heaps of pipes in the way because our legs are here. So what we're going to do, as cool as it would be to stick it loud and proud, getting those hoses back is not really practical. Even, I mean, under there would maybe work, but being that our turbo's at the back... I know what you're about to say, And we Martin, have the packaging space... We're making some mounts, and we're doing this full VL Commodore style. There's going to be some mounts coming out the front. No. And that's just going to be dragging on the road just there. That is going to be awesome flow, isn't it? I already have question marks about the safety of having a turbo <laughs> hanging out here, so I don't know about the safety of having that there. So what we're going to do instead is I think it doesn't... Front mount, front mount intercooler is a bit of a furphy. You just need an intercooler that gets air through it. Dude, we're going S chassis side mount. What about like that or something? Oh, that's kind of like more MR2, isn't it? Yeah. Like, we'll work it out, but like, like in there somewhere. And yes. then you just go pipe out of here, boom, into the intake. Now, 
Why was I so excited about this project all along? Well, it probably harks back to an episode we did probably over a decade ago where we actually got a blow-off valve working on my push bike. So one of the things that I was most excited about this project was actually having a working blow-off valve. So we contacted GFB, they're friends of ours, an Australian manufacturer that makes all sorts of mad turbo bits, Go Fast Bits, that's the name of the company, and our mate Brett that works there, uh, we got a whole series on our second channel that features him talking about mad turbo stuff, very educational. We said to him, can you make us a blow-off valve for our posty bike? So Mighty Car Mods came to us and they said they've got a new project and they need a blow-off valve for it. Now, the problem is they needed something like this, but a lot smaller. So we came up with this. Look at that. It's tiny. Our longtime friend Brett from GFB did some mad computer-aided fandangling and managed to get his CNC machines to create a customised, one-of-a-kind, miniature but fully functioning blow-off valve for our custom bike project. Made from a round aluminium billet, it's been milled, drilled and then later anodised along with some special laser engraving made right here in Australia by this bunch of epic legends. Here's the raw piece directly next to a full-size GFB response valve. It's tiny and it's awesome. What I would suggest is at least the very first in the world and smallest blow-off valve <laughs> that is a GFB posty spec blow-off valve. So that is like the GFB response valve but just really, really small. So once we've got this pipe, that's gonna just kinda go here somewhere. On the, on the charge pipe, yeah. Is anyone else as excited as I am right now, Martin? I think I might be. I think you might be. I think it looks ridiculous, but it's just so cool. It's great. So let's, let's get this going. And um, thank you very much, GFB, for making us that valve, because that is just, that is the coolest. So thank you very much. I actually don't know if this is the smallest blow-off valve in the world, but it is the smallest custom-made post spec blow-off valve in the world, so good enough for me. Alright, so we've just got to work out the piping now from the cooler into the engine. The cooler is great. So I'm going to be a stunt model. So your two options are to go back or that way, way. Yep. or down and sort of under your foot. But yeah, maybe that's the go, man. Through here. Yeah. And How hot's it going to get? Not that hot. I don't think it's going to make much boost. <laughs> yeah, like here and then down, I reckon. Yeah. And then into that, sort of get back up there somehow with a... <laughs> with a... How good is it? It's great, man. It's fun, this is the fun I'll bit. I'll hold that, I'll hold that. This is the fun bit, and I reckon we... We got any more straights? I'll just cut some. No, those. we got plenty of straights. What we don't have is bends, because that's one and a half inch. I just don't have one and a half inch bendy things, but yep. I got heaps of straight ones, so we'll just make that, yep. and like make it out of metal, and make, make a pipe. Yes. Yeah, we put our blow off valve. Where should we put our blow off valve? Here? Oh, just pointing out there. Where is it? Oh, it's just over there. Can you grab it? So we need to put it onto a little adapter pipe, which is this, so we'll weld that on. And then just have it like, like that. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> That's great. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, man.
Oh yeah, dude. How many hours have you been welding for? I don't know. Look at this. Get in on Not this. a lot. Look, man. That's all right. That's awesome. There's some good and some bad. That's fusion. That's that's like fusion welding because you don't even need filler. You should be very proud of that, mate. Oh, thank you, Martin. That's very difficult to do that neat. I've had good instruction <laughs> from Martin. <laughs> Almost done. Let's go. This is the moment of truth, Martin. Let's see if my hole lines up with the pipe. All right, that's going to be there. That's going to be there. Ah, oh, Martin. Is it good? Ah, oh, let's let's see. Does the pipe actually fit through there? <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. That's oh, so good. That's spectacular. That is so is good. That? I don't know where that silicon went. Oh, that one. That one. Look at that. See, it's now. It looks so factory now. Yeah, it really does. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's great. Excuse me, sir. Have you done any modifications to your motorcycle? Absolutely not. Test it. This. This is how. Oh, let's they work come out from... exactly where that blow valve is going to go, dude. This that's... is how they come from the factory. Look at that. Where's your post spec blow valve? Maybe it needs to go right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pointing up. Yeah. Or, or out there with the, like pointing Are forwards. you going to kick it? Where'd that blow valve go? In the That's middle it. of where I had it. Yeah. yeah. Eyes. <laughs> One side. <laughs> Um, can the pod... Um... Why? Never gonna dance again. Our posty spec blow off valve works like just about any other blow off valve. Basically, you're going to have the turbo pushing that massive amount of boost against that plunger that's in there. And on the other side, you're also going to have boost that's holding it shut. Now, when, it's, when they swap and when this has got lots of boost pressure on it, we snap the throttle shut. This, is, instead of seeing boost, is going to see vacuum and it's going to go, ah, and it's going to open and it's going to go, and let all the uh, air that's between the turbo and the th closed throttle body out that hole. So to make that happen, we have our little intake manifold, which is this thing, but we need to get a signal, basically a vacuum signal, a reference out of this for a few reasons, but mostly for our blow-off valve. So what I'm gonna do, because it's such a tiny thing, is just use this little bit of, what do you know what you call this? Um, no, it's got a name, something tube. I don't know, someone will tell me. And anyway, it's used in food usually, but this is stainless steel, which is cool, so you can weld it. I'm gonna drill a little hole and just have the tube sticking out so that we get a reference signal and just put a bit of like glue or whatever in there, super glue, because it's not gonna leak much anyway. And drill a hole, put that in, attach that to blow off valve, attach blow off valve to bike, make noises. Hopefully. This post throttle pressure source will achieve a few things. Firstly, our engine management will be able to get the vacuum and boost measurements it will need to correctly inject the right amount of fuel. It will also run a boost reference fuel pressure regulator to prevent the fuel injection being resisted by the extra pressure inside the intake. It will also trigger our blower valve and we're going to stick a boost gauge on it that originally came from one of our key car adventures in Japan. So all that's left to do now is connect up all our mad new mods, install the required vacuum lines, tighten the hose clamps on our new intercooler pipes and reinstall all the plastic fairings on our Super Cub. Working on a vehicle like this may be different to what we're normally working on on cars, but getting together with a mate to make a mad vehicle go choo-choo is one of the best things you can do. So now it's time to step back and take stock of these amazing changes that we've made to this amazing vehicle. We did a thing. It's, I I'm mean... I'm not so sure. I really like it. No, no, that's that's everything that I imagined. And more. And more. Intercooled. Intercooled. Boost gauge. Blow off valved. Big pipes. It, 
I've seen some Cubs that are works of art, right? Yeah. And they are like, the, no, craftsmanship is next level. Yes. The art, you could say, is present. There's, there's, a, there's a sniff, a sniff of art. But actually what we're looking at is function, but only if it actually works. Well, we, we haven't started. How are we going to know? Well, now, now we're going to start it. This is it? Yeah. All right, Martin, it's time. Turning the key. <laughs> key has turned. Here we Do go. It. Doing it. Doing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got boost. <laughs> We've got vacuum. I don't know if we're ever going to see boost. so good and so bad <laughs> well <laughs> I think I saw 0 0.3 psi or whatever that is kilogram centimeters of boost boost bo it doesn't matter whether you boost mine inch or a mile man boost is boost it also needs load yes. I mean it's so unlikely we're ever gonna get past four or five pounds on this anyway and you're probably gonna need to be traveling before you see it yeah and it's gonna need fuel more fuel and it's gonna need spark at the right time yeah but hardware-wise, look at this beast. It's amazing. It's beautiful. My car goes psh, psh. What's for lunch? Tofu. Yeah, it's yeah. tofu time. Tofu and mushroom risotto. 